In this video, we're going to use some free tools, and I'm going to use those free tools to help understand and build a game plan inside of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been selling off now for quite some time. From our high of 127,240, we're currently below that 100,000 mark. The question I'm looking to answer in today's video is where, if at any point, do we want to be buyers of Bitcoin? We're starting to breach some key Fibonacci levels, which one should we be paying attention to? To help us answer this question, I'm going to be studying Bitcoin through three different angles. The first is going to be using some basic price and volatility clues. For that, we're going to be using our candle counter indicator along with the triple squeeze, particularly the histogram. After that, we'll switch gears and we'll take a look at Fibonacci, taking a look at our major Fibonacci swings and seeing what levels that gives us. Finally, we'll conclude with dissecting Bitcoin through seasonality, taking a look and bringing together a final picture of which months we tend to see strength inside of Bitcoin and which months we tend to see weakness. Let's use that to build together a final game plan with one price level that we would like to buy Bitcoin at. Now let's start first with our price and volatility analysis. Starting off, I'm on the weekly time frame chart and I'm going back 20 years to get as much data as I possibly can. Now in this sell side activity, take a look at what the candle counter is telling us. As of right now, we're at four consecutive weeks of bearish activity. We can see that with one, two, three, and four different red candles. Now the candle counter helps us understand context of this bearish activity. So over this 20 year period, we can see that the max number of red consecutive weeks that we've had has been a total of nine. So that means we have seen nine weeks in a row in which Bitcoin has sold off. And that was in May of 2022. That's this period right here in which Bitcoin had that nine consecutive week period. Now, if we take a look at what the average is, you'll see the average is a little bit less than two weeks. So two weeks down and then we see a bit of pause. So right now at this four week mark, we're definitely above the average mark. Let's also take this four and just draw a line horizontally across. Take a look at what I think is a very clear observation. Four weeks tends to be towards the upper end of the extreme zone in which we see this bearish activity before you see at least a little bit of a breather, both on the bearish and the bullish side. When we do exceed it, we've gone, what, up to about seven weeks before we truly see that price needs to take a bit of a pause. So anywhere from this four to seven week mark, we know that we're starting to hit really extreme zones here. Currently at four and price is gravitating inside of our Fibonacci zones. Now, before we switch to Fibonacci, let's also take a look at the squeeze here. Our triple squeeze has flipped our momentum from positive to negative. We can see that with this very clearly red histogram bar. Now what we're looking for in order to see this momentum switch is for this red histogram bar to take a pause and for us to see one week with this yellow histogram bar. It would make sense that that week would coincide with the green week and that would also make sense in terms of topping out our extreme level on the max consecutive down weeks. So that would be a confirmation. Seeing this yellow bar would help us confirm that momentum is now coming back in more towards the bullish side. If we can start to see this momentum slingshot, maybe even launch the squeeze where it fires long, I think that sets up a really nice trade inside of Bitcoin. Now, all of that would only make sense if we had some longer term bias here. So with that, let's start to switch gears to angle number two, which is Fibonacci. To help us understand what sort of Fibonacci edge we have, I've projected four Fibonacci levels here. One, two, three, and four. All four of these levels come from me looking at past swings, and I'm going back to 2021. So we have this swing high to this swing low, the swing high to this swing low, and then we have this swing right here. So let me draw a line just so it's easy for you to see. So what swing one, swing two, swing three, and swing four. We're taking these four swings, and we're measuring this move and comparing that from our current high, trying to project where, if at all, may we see a little bit of symmetry here, Fibonacci symmetry, that would suggest that we would see a bit of pause. That gave us four levels. Three out of these four levels we've already crossed. The first was at 102,000, already broken outside of that. The next two levels, 91,725 and 90,520. 
And with this week's candle, if we continue to close below it, it feels like we would have broken outside of those levels. That leaves us with the last level to the downside, 72,810. Now this feels like a bit of a ways down from where we're currently at. Bearing in mind we started at 127,000, and we're trying to see if we can make a move all the way down to about 7210. In terms of a percentage correction, that would be a correction from our highs in Bitcoin of nearly 42%. Makes sense for a fairly risky asset class, but also feels a little bit extended. So that's where I bring finally the last piece of our puzzle, which is seasonality. To help us answer that question, we're coming back into with our 20 year uh, time period, but the daily chart instead of the weekly chart. Now with that, we get a better seasonality picture, one that's a little bit more accurate. We can see October is a strong month, and after October, we're currently in November, November and December tend to be weaker months inside of Bitcoin. So we're very much holding true to our seasonality patterns. We're seeing November is traditionally a weak month, and that's exactly what's happening right now. If you think November is weak, December is supposed to be even weaker. So I would expect to see that weakness continue. Come January, February, March, and April of next year is when we finally expect to see that strength kick back in, and that's where I would expect to find some support. So as we close out this year, the final, what, five, six weeks that are left, I would expect to see a little bit more volatility in Bitcoin, and the level I'm looking at is 72,810. I think if we can get to this level, that makes sense for a really nice buy side entry. It's a little below our previous support, so taking out any stops that are below this level. It's a nice Fibonacci level. It supports or lines up rather nicely with our two-month period of weakness. And if we were to come back to that weekly time period chart, if we were to see, let's say, one or two more consecutive weeks of weakness, that would take us to that six- or seven-week mark where we know we are definitely towards the upper end of the extreme mark in terms of consecutive bear candles that we tend to see inside of Bitcoin. So that's my bullish thesis and where I'm trying to take advantage of this current bearishness inside of Bitcoin to try and actually patiently wait for that right level, which in this case, 72,810, see if we can get there and be ready for this level instead of being caught off guard if and when we do get to it. For those of you looking to trade Bitcoin, I hope you found this video helpful in understanding not only how and what the current asset class is, but how to take advantage of some seasonal patterns and use some of our free tools to get a better picture of some of your favorite asset classes. Take care and I'll see you in our next update.